Welcome to season two of Girl Sense. I'm Maria del Carmen, your host. Today's special guest is Sarah Capaletti. After graduating the University of Connecticut, Sarah decided to become a flight attendant. Today, she is a pilot for the American Airlines Express Carrier. I am very excited to hear about her journey, but I am extremely ecstatic to know that she is also a Windsor High graduate. Without further ado, Sarah, welcome to the Girlsense family. Thank you. Thank you very much. I cannot tell you how excited I am to have a female pilot on the Girlsense family. <laughs> so thank you for coming on. Oh, I'm happy to come. <laughs> so let's go back a little. Let's just start with one of the bullet points that I mentioned. Uh, you graduated from UConn, and how did that turn into becoming a flight attendant? When I graduated, <laughs> yeah, I know, it's strange. <laughs> when I graduated, I had a degree in English, okay. and I didn't know what to do with it. I wanted to write, I wanted to travel, I just wanted to do so much, sure. but I couldn't really pinpoint down something. So this, I had the opportunity to become a flight attendant, and I jumped into it. I said, that'll be fun. Yeah. And oh, it was. I loved it. I loved the lifestyle and I loved the airplanes and I was always looking up front I was always asking you know what's sure. that what's that what does that do sure. and finally one day one of the pilots was like you know just just take a lesson yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're always asking me all these questions yeah, just yeah. go and do it yeah okay so yeah. so was aviation was it an afterthought after graduating UConn, or was it an attraction from early on? I'd always wanted to learn. Okay. I, I always thought it was very cool, and I had thought about it beforehand, but I was sort of intimidated because I didn't know anyone who was a pilot. Sure. It's expensive, mm. and I didn't even know how to proceed. So I kind of put it on the back burner and didn't yep. really think about it until it was in front of me, and I thought, yeah. hey, there it is. You know, sometimes <laughs> the opportunity just comes right to you. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, so tell me about flight attendant school. Is that how you would say flight attendant school? Flight attendant school? No, no. Or when you become a flight attendant, you get hired by the company and they train you okay. for about six weeks. Okay. Pilot school is Pilot different. Pilot school. Yeah. Okay. All right. That's the one that costs a lot of money. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it does, but it's uh -huh. worth every penny. That's and, wonderful. Um, I had to get my private pilot's license, then my okay. instrument license, then my commercial license, and finally my air traffic pilot license. Oh my goodness. Sorry. That's okay. <laughs> That's fine. So during, while you were uh, being trained as a flight attendant still, um, was it popular back then to be, like well, how large was your class, you know, compared to maybe what your insights today? Is it a popular thing that? Um, no. It wasn't very popular. Mm -hmm. The flight attendant class, you yes. mean, or the pilot class? The flight attendant. Flight attendant class. I was one of maybe 30 people okay. in the class. They had a class every two months. Okay. So and it was just what they were hiring at the time. Sure. I was going to yeah. say, like, the industry, that's where, I, yeah, so I was trying to, to kind of gauge the industry. Oh. Like, was that pop? This was before September 11th. It was different. Mm. They were hiring quite a bit. They dropped. They okay. dropped off hiring after September 11th, so oh. I'm lucky that I started oh, flying I before that. Yes, 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 makes sense. So when you decided that this was the path that you were going to take on, were you supported by your family? Because I can... My uh, mother was frightened. I was going to say, like, <laughs> I don't know what could be worse. I'm going to, Mom, I'm going to the Army? <laughs> no, my I mother didn't want me to do it. She was scared. She says, dangerous, people die doing oh. that. And I said, Mom... <laughs> You can die in the car either, yeah. you know, and it's possible. Yeah, and I've kind of heard so. um, for many years statistics that it's safer to fly than to drive. It is. is that is cor correct? It is. Yeah, okay. It's true. Oh, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> Who knew? So you started um, at the age of 26 yeah. as a flight attendant, but then mm -hmm. you commenced um, your career as a flight or a pilot um, at age 28. Is that correct? Yes. Actually, it no, I'm sorry, it's not. I started okay. as a flight attendant at 24, and then at 26, I started flying oh. myself. I started taking flying lessons. Flying lessons, okay. And so then, between the ages of 26 and 28, I learned how to fly, got okay. my appropriate commercial license, and then I was hired by um, the airlines at the age of 28. At the age of 28. So I was trying to think during the 90s, 
some of the vacations that I've taken. Yeah. I don't remember ever seeing anyone looking like you. <laughs> I mean, respectfully so. They were, you know, yeah. tall at, and they were respectfully about the min, min, at minimum, they're 50. Sure. And sure. for sure, all males. Sure. So yeah. what is that equivalent today? So the, about 5% of the pilot population are female. 5%. So the chances of you flying with a female pilot are not exactly. huge. Right. When I first started, the first company I got hired with was actually really progressive and 10% of their population were. Oh, good. 10% of their pilot population were female. Oh, oh wow. Yeah, so I used That's to fly really regularly with another woman. Um, on my first job, I was based in Bar Harbor, and she and I would fly all over the Northeast. Yeah. And people loved it. They're like, look, two female pilots. Oh, my thought, God, how exciting. Well, it was unusual. Yeah, right, 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 yeah. exactly. So do you feel that from the application phase that you were automatically accepted, um, or was there some challenges along the way? Um, yeah, there were some challenges. I... Um, I had the typical experience that most women have, you know, oh, who's cooking for your husband while you're out flying and uh, things like that, mm -hmm, you know. Mm -hmm. Nothing that really held me back, though, okay. I have to say. I didn't have any experience so bad that it prevented me from doing what I wanted to do. And did anyone really take up the time to try to discourage you, like intentionally discourage you within the company? Um, no, not within no. the company. Outside the company? No. Well, random people you meet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> probably, yeah. let's just say they were probably just worried. <laughs> let's just say that, sure. <laughs> let's just sure. say that. <laughs> um, and so you tapped on it a little bit, uh, um, a little while ago, but when, during the time that you were approached or people were like, oh, look at the two female pilots. Um, on a serious note though, did you ever come across, uh, or give me a time that you come, came across a t uh, that you were approached by a male or that you heard something on the negative tone um, that you, know, you might have experienced? Well, the most common thing I hear, even today, and all of the female pilots I, I speak to hear this, is that people assume we're flight attendants. Mm. So when it was just uh, my former coworker Lisa and I flying, mm. someone men often would get on board and go, well, there's no pilots. You know? oh, okay. Or I'd have somebody say, what are you doing sitting up front? You can't sit up front. And I'm like, well, actually I can. <laughs> <laughs> they just don't assume that I'm a right. pilot. Right, so it's more of attendant. the job role versus yes. than the gender? It's the job role assumption because of the gender. Right, yeah, Women yeah, yeah, are more yeah. likely to be flight attendants than pilots. Yeah, yeah. oh, well, you know, that sounds yeah. like a good ride thus far, <laughs> you know? That's that's excellent, yeah. that's excellent. I, I mean, I have had people say, well, you're so little, you're picking up, you're flying this big airplane, and yeah. I say, well, I don't have to pick it up on my <laughs> shoulders, I just have to fly it. Very good, very good. Um, so I attended the um, Women's March last January. Me too. Did you? Awesome. Yeah. Or as you, and hundreds and thousands of women once again attended uh, just this past weekend. Um, and as you know, because you, it was your first hand experience um, last year, you know, the fight is still equality. Oh, yeah. It's all of sure. the above. It's all of the unfinished business um, started way before my time, you know, early mm -hmm. 60s or, you know, whenever it actually really did begin. Um, in this industry, um, how can we specifically engage not just youth, but even women are in school? Like where does become a pilot attendant can be just a regular thing? You know, what venue could we use? How can we, um, you know, attract individuals to become one? To become a pilot? Correct. Yeah. yeah. I, um, I like to talk to people about it and be visible because okay. I have to be seen to be believed. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Right. People can't be what they can't see. That's correct. And if someone sees me and says, oh, she doesn't look like a man, and she's yeah. flying this airplane, maybe I can too. I invite the girls up into the cockpit, and the boys too. I invite sure. everybody up sure. in the cockpit, and I give out wings to everybody. But I always make nice. a point of 
introducing myself as the pilot to the to the young girls. Be like, hey, this is my job. I do this. Yeah, you know, yeah, it's yeah. possible. Wow. You could do it too. And so, do you ever have you ever taken it out? Let's just say in the community where you visited schools or libraries. I did or visit schools when I lived in New York. I haven't done it here in Connecticut yet, but okay. I will. I'm not. I'm not opposed to it. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> there are groups. Um, Women in Aviation is an example. Correct. We have. Um, a large group of women who do go out into the schools, into the public, and they have materials that they can give me if I, if I need to. If I call them up and say, hey, I've been invited to speak at the elementary school, they're going to be like, oh, great, download this, do this, oh, all sorts okay. of ideas. Okay. So it, is, it is. Awesome no, it is, it is a thing. They're doing this. Oh, good. Helping, That's you know. great. So when you started, was it only 5%? Did it ever increase or did it steady? When I started, it was 5%. It increased up to about 7% and then it went back down to 5%. I went back down it's, to 5%. It's declined in the past year or so. What's your thoughts about behind Because it's there? so expensive. Oh, when just... the economy declines, less people will be pilots. It's unreasonably expensive okay. to learn how to fly. It cost me $30,000 okay. to get all my licenses which is something that people sometimes willing to pay for a four-year degree, but right. I was for say. A, a pilot's license, which you often have to have a four-year degree anyway just to get hired by the airline, ah. so that's an additional. Yeah, it would be yeah, like yeah. getting a master's or a doctorate. Right, right. Oh, and okay. it's, it's, it's a hindrance, mm. definitely. Mm. So, and um, I'll ask, and you have any little ones? I have a son. A, a son. Okay, it's on. Um, so, what would be your message um, if you were before a fifth grade or a sixth grade or a second grade um, group of young females, as far as the exciting part? Um, what would you? What would your words of empowerment be to that group? I'd say, don't let anything stop you. Just don't let anything stop you. It's fun. It's worth it. It's exciting. And it's a good career in the end. Once you've achieved your goal, just uh -huh. don't let anyone stop you. Don't let them tell you it's too expensive or too difficult. Mm -hmm. And so where, well, I suppose they can just look it up. These days we just Google anything and we find yeah. anything, right? <laughs> that's true. <laughs> Scholarships for pilots. Well, that's where I was going. Pilots. Yeah. So The Women in Aviation Organization, they do offer scholarships quite okay. a bit. Okay. And so that's yeah. leading great lead to my following questions with regards to these organizations that you mm -hmm. belong to. Um, so do you have to be a pilot to belong to the organization or? There are two the main um, organizations for women. One is called the 99s and that was founded by Amelia Earhart and her friends. Uh -huh. And they're all pilots. You do have to have a pilot's license to be a member. Okay. And this group is, they do have some scholarships but it's a much smaller organization. Okay. And it's more fun than anything else. Mm -hmm. We go out and we take a plane to, you know, Vermont to the mountains for lunch sure. and then come back or just for fun. Yeah, yeah. The other group, Women in Aviation, is much bigger and right. it encompasses air traffic controllers, aerospace engineers, rampers, gate agents, anyone who's in the aviation industry. And how far apart are uh, pilot school? Is that, do we have one in every state or how? We have two in Hartford. Two in, in Hartford alone. <laughs> yes. Wow. Yes, they're, they're <laughs> all over the knew? place. <laughs> I had no idea. They're all over the place. In fact, I taught at one um, part time. I used to teach flying at one in Simsbury. Oh, There's one okay. There too. Wow. Okay. Yeah. And so, what's the duration? That depends on how much money you have. That is truthfully how fast you can go because you have to pay for each lesson. Okay. And they're expensive. So, for example, I just decided I wanted to do this and I went full out and I took out a loan mm -hmm. and I did it all in a year. Mm -hmm. in a okay. year. That's not common because most people cannot have that opportunity sure. to take out a loan and do that. Sure. Um, it's going to cost you upwards of $8,000 just to get the first part of the license done, the private. Okay. And that can take a year if you have to pay for it every week. Right. Yeah. S do they reward you the license? because you completed the program? You yes, know. Okay. you have to do a certain amount of hours or, as or dictated by pay. me. <laughs> no, 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 no. So let's say a lesson might cost $200 and you have to do one every week, you know, to do your, yeah. to get your license. You need okay. to do 40 lessons in order to get your private. I see. Yeah. So all in all, it, it, it's doable to do it in a year. It is, but it is. If you realistically, can, 
it should be like maybe. It depends. If you want to go like I did, take out a loan and yeah. <laughs> just go full steam ahead. So there's individuals yeah. there that could take their own time, you know, take a couple of lessons a yes, year. You could do take it on the weekends. You know, you certainly don't can. put that in my head. <laughs> You know, flying off a plane is actually one of my goals for oh, 20 years. Yeah, jumping off a plane is one okay. of my goals uh, for yeah, 20 years. I don't jump out of perfectly good airplanes. <laughs> <laughs> I fly them. Because <laughs> I'm scared of heights, but that's one of my goals this year. Mm -hmm. But a flying one, yeah. Mm. <laughs> but it was exciting. Who knows? That's wonderful. So um, you mentioned you had a son, mm -hmm. and what, it was, what are his interests? Oh, he wants to be That's a rock far. star. Oh, he he's wants to be a rock star. <laughs> he's not going to be a pilot. He won't be a pilot. He'll be an engineer and a rock star, he's told me. An so. engineer. <laughs> That's so funny. Um, so what is your most um, that you've accomplished? What is What are you most proud of um, as far as I'm your accomplishments? I'm most proud of my current um, type rating. So for every airplane that you learn to fly, Okay over a certain weight, I'm not talking about four-seater airplanes, we're talking about airliner airplanes, like mm. jets, mm. you have to get a certain class for that plane, and you have to get what's called a, a rating. Oh, okay. And it, it's written on your license then. Okay. And some of them are more difficult than others, and this one that I recently did I found very difficult, but I'm proud of the fact that I managed to do it. It's oh, hard that's work. that's great. That's and, wonderful. Yeah. That is great. And one word that would describe you? Tenacious, <laughs> I suppose. And are you an only child? Were you the no. only? Okay, no. so and your siblings? I have a brother. Mm -hmm. and, oh, your brother, okay. And yeah. no pilot, no co pilot? No. <laughs> I'm the only one in my family. Aww. Really? The only one in your family. Mm -hmm. So after scaring your mother or parents to death, I'm sure yes. she's very proud of you today. Yes, yes. <laughs> yes. That's great. And, um, I have a question that I want to go back to with regards to the, um, the organization um, specifically. So if someone is interested in becoming, in knowing either more information on how to be yeah. become a, 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 a pilot, um, the organization, is it just fem for females or is it co-ed? The 99s is just for females, okay, but and the, the Women in Aviation allows men to join as well. Okay, perfect. Yeah. But it is primarily an organization designed to support and uplift women. Women. Mm -hmm. So if anyone is interested, um, I will be uploading the information okay. on my website. Um, and so the information in and of itself, is it more of this is... Um, how you can get a pilot's uh, license or what type of information can they expect to know? Will they answer their questions? Absolutely, absolutely. There are and people them. who live in the area. There's group meetings. They're more than happy to talk to someone. Um, the president of our local chapter is an aerospace engineer with Pratt & Whitney. Okay. And in our group of women in aviation, we have pilots, we have engineers, we have air traffic controllers. So whatever your interest is in aviation, they'll, they'll be happy to talk to you. And how different is it be between, because um, you're currently working for American Airlines, a carrier express? It's an express carrier. An express carrier? Yeah, one of the smaller jets that they fly okay. regionally from, for example, Boston to Philadelphia. You're okay. not going to get on a huge right. 757 to do that. So. Okay. Okay, so pilot for... Uh, that arm of become of flying yes. versus uh, traveling, like for airline, like what am I trying to say? Like um, vacationing. Oh, you mean long distance? Long distance. Okay. So, so I'm assuming that goal? express carriers for shipment, or did I assume no, incorrectly? No. no, it's people. Oh, it is people. Yeah. Oh, why did when I you get think? On a small, you know what a puddle jumper is? No. Okay. <laughs> when you if you fly from Let's say you're flying to Miami, yeah. and you get in a plane in Hartford, and you make a stop in Philadelphia, and you okay. change planes. That first plane between Hartford and Philadelphia is not going to be a big plane, because it's a short trip. Okay, yes, I do. Okay, yeah. I guess so I didn't know the name the of that. that's the one that I fly, okay. the smaller planes. I understand that. I yeah. understand. So then the larger planes that will take me, so True. I'll be going to Italy in March. Oh, so that, <laughs> yeah. So that, um, so the 
flight, a schedule, like how rigorous is it, I guess, is my final, is my ultimate how question. How rigorous is that schedule? Mm. It's not very rigorous. No. <laughs> no, it's not. Um, the FAA is very clear about how much we can fly. They make okay. sure we have enough rest. Okay. You know, for example, if I'm going to fly to Italy from Philadelphia, I'll fly from Philadelphia to Rome, I'll then have like 48 hours off. Okay. Just to let my body accumulate sure. and rest. And then I fly back. Okay. And that's my week. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> now, that's the job that I want. That's my goal. Wow, okay. But I don't have it yet. Oh, wonderful. So. Okay. You know, coincidentally, over the weekend, I just saw, um, I, I came upon, uh, upon this movie called View from the Top, and it has to do with, you know, a female pilot. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. Well, she went through a whole heck of a lot. You know, just become <laughs> a pilot or, you know, um, even the challenges from female pilot to female pilot or just within the same gender. So what was your experience as far as working with um, either uh, a co-pilot or a pilot right in your arm or mm -hmm. the, the plane that you fly yeah. or just in your environment? Well, I always fly with a co-pilot. There's always two of us. Yeah. That's a law. Yes. There has to be two pilots. Correct. Um, I get along with everybody I fly with. I haven't had any problems. I love flying with other women. We're so rare. We're like yeah, little unicorns. So course. when you get into the cockpit and you see another woman, you're like, hey! Yeah. <laughs> it's nice. It is. That's great. Makes you feel a little bit less alone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Well, I want to thank you so much for oh, sure. being on the Girl Sense show. I am sure. so proud to have a pilot in the Girl Sense <laughs> family. I actually I'm have like a million here. questions, but I feel like, oh my gosh, I think I'm just a little bit too excited today. <laughs> Ask away. It's fine. I'm a little bit too excited today. Um, but I do um, would love to, I will be uploading all the information okay. up to uh, the website. Um, I will add your lovely picture to the website <laughs> so people can see who you are. And hopefully the next time you come, perhaps you'll come with a co-pilot. Oh, How's that? Sure. <laughs> sure. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. I'm Maria del Calmen, your host. Visit girlsense.com for information about our guest. Join us again for more Girl Sense.